I've dug out all the grass. As you can see, the soil quality right here is very poor. So I'll be digging down further before adding a nice deep layer of homemade compost. Digging down further will also help ensure that I get rid of any grass roots that I might have missed. If you're curious about this box, I made it to keep an electrical outlet dry. It also houses the energizer for an electric fence around our mobile chicken coop. This fence is off right now, but I'll need to hook that fence up pretty soon because these baby chickens no longer need this heat lamp and are big enough to go outside. We want to keep them separated from the rest of our flock until they're much larger. They just need to be more able to fend for themselves in the pecking order. Come here, it's okay. Look at these cute little feather feet. Remember, the whole reason I'm creating a brand new flower bed is because we're getting a new goat shed. That shed will be going right where an existing flower bed is, so those flowers need to be transplanted. I've made some progress over here digging out the grass and removing the gravel that was over here. There's still more leveling work to do, but that'll be easier when these flowers have been transplanted. Some of the excess dirt has already been spread out here in the lawn. If you've ever let animals graze in your lawn, and really, how many of us can say we've done that? You'll know they really are a little bit hard on the surface of the lawn. They have special trails they like to go on all the time and they wear ruts into it. And there's just a lot of divots and dead spots. So I'm filling it in with a little dirt to try and smooth it out. And over time, as the grass regrows, it'll be much nicer. It would be a shame to just set a building right over the top of these perfectly good paver stones. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig those out to use later. It's late summer, and I wanted to show off some of Wendy's beans. 
Aren't they gorgeous? We're letting some things go to seed out here so we can save the seeds for later. Actually, I was a little worried that you might be as tired as I am in this video of just showing ugly patches of gravel and dug up dirt. Even when I do have the crocosmia and the irises transplanted to the new garden bed that I'm getting ready, it won't be much to look at. You have to severely cut them back so the plants aren't overly stressed by trying to support so much green vegetation. Late summer is the perfect time to transplant irises. The crocosmia would do better if I could have waited until fall. I'll just have to make sure they don't dry out too much over the rest of the season. The new garden bed will have plenty of room for those flowers to grow and spread over the years. And this fall, my plan is to plant some echinacea and shasta daisies in there too. It took me longer to dig all this out than I thought it would. To treat myself for getting so far, I decided to get a haircut. Little overdue, I thought. I tried not to disturb the azalea or these irises that were already in place. Or the pear tree too much. This was how my setup worked. I'd sift the dirt through this hardware cloth screen to get good clean fill dirt. And I had these two garbage cans at hand. One for rocks and roots and dirt clods that were just too hard to easily break up through that screen. The other can was just for garbage. The garbage was mostly bits of black plastic, but there were also some little pieces of metal and broken glass and ceramics, little pieces of concrete. You never know what you're going to find. I actually found a marble and somebody's shirt button. I tried not to let this can of poor quality fill dirt get much higher than it is now. Dirt and rocks do get heavy. Remember that root ball crater? I wanted to give you a second look at this really big tree that came down in the storm. Now I'm six feet tall, so you can judge how big this root ball is. This stuff has been going in there. This is also where I put the dug up grass. Some of the good fill dirt was put in more low spots of the yard. A good chunk of it went under this tree that I cut back. I also piled some of it back in here. because I just don't have enough homemade compost to refill all of what I removed. I'll be using this compost, some of this old depleted potting soil, and all of the rabbit manure that we have on hand. I'll also be robbing Peter to pay Paul. We don't need to plant anything in this new raised bed until spring, so I'll be digging some of this out too. As you can see, some of it already has been dug out. 
I did disturb some of the daffodil bulbs we have here, and I just wanted to replant them right away. This amended soil won't be quite as nice as what's in our raised beds for our vegetables, but it should be just great for a flower bed. Filling in that flower bed should be more fun than digging it out was. It's kind of nice. We just got a little bit of much needed rain. 
This worked out just as well as I could have hoped. I didn't use quite as much of this depleted potting soil as I thought I would, but it's always here if I need a little more. Now that this bin is empty, and this bed has been skimmed, I can sprinkle the rabbit manure between these piles before mixing it all together. This video is about long enough. My next one will show how to transplant those irises and crocosmia. I'll probably also show a little prep work for the goat fencing, so stay tuned for part three of Big Things Are Happening.